climate change is an environmental reality. It's also a harsh economic reality. As a small island developing state that depends so heavily on its coastal ecosystems, Jamaica needs to be able to adapt to climate change. For climate change could mean hurricanes, increased storm surges and flooding. And that could be disastrous. Climate change therefore forces us to do things differently. Some Jamaicans had already begun to feel the effects of climate change and had started exploring new ways to earn a living. I used to do farming, I used to plant catch crops like the carrot and those and take to the market in Sablanmar. Things not bearing like before, so I have to make a switch and go over to beekeeping. The way we do things at times, we need to consider how we do it and we have to do it in a sustainable way. Fishermen are now complaining that they are getting less catch. Coal burners, they are also complaining that there is not much coal for them to burn and so they are encroaching on other sensitive areas, especially watershed areas, wetland areas and so on, and depleting our natural environment. I used to do goat rearing on a wide scale but because of the climate change and the, we, we, when we're getting rain, we get a lot of rain. So because the amount of rain, I, I used to last my goat 10 and 15 per day. So I lose a whole lot. So then I started to think, why not go into the bees more seriously? Because the, the, the rain would not affect the bees as bad as it is actually affecting the goat. One thing that we see over the years is that the weather is changing. Also, the fishery is depleting. And um, so one of the things that we got was the Bluefields Bay declared a fish sanctuary. And uh, when we got it declared, we realized that the only way the fishery is going to truly come back unless we reduce the pressure on the fishery um, and also re really reduce, looking at what kind of also alternative livelihood given that um, climate change is here and it is here to stay. Then a most timely intervention, the Climate Change Adaptation and the Disaster Risk Reduction Project. Through the EU UNEP Climate Change Adaptation and Disaster Risk Reduction Project, we have an opportunity to now do something about climate change. NEPA's component is focused on adaptation, increasing the resilience of our coastal ecosystems, so our mangroves, our sea grasses, our coral reefs and also increasing community resilience in these areas. So we are making the communities more resilient to climate change by providing them with opportunities to delve into other livelihoods. We visited eight communities which shared $15.8 million to pursue their new life-changing initiatives. Three of them think beekeeping is the way to go. Why? Honey is money. And the, the good thing about with bees before you even have the honey, you have a market for it. Because the market is there. And you can't fill the market. Recently, we, from the CDC, that is a community-based organization within the, the community of Aldir, Mernsville, Aldir, we wrote a project to the NEPA for a beekeeping thing. And from that, we receive basically two million dollars which we put in this development in purchasing 40 colony of bees and we train 20 individuals so we have 20 trainees who come on board and after they are trained for 15 weeks they receive two colony of bees each and if you look behind me here you can see the bees are here you have a great need for honey production production honey production we have a mandate to educate the nation and we are start with the group in the west Poland. we are now a benevolent society and um, one of the things that we need to do is to be a sustainable entity and so we approach the national land agency and um, we applied for three acres of land and so we want to develop this land and add it as a demonstration site for the wider community. 
and hence this project True Nepal is coming at the right time I would say to enhance our development and particularly as it relates to livelihood. Well we saw the had and I talked to CCAM who actually are our NGOs in the area and we go to a seminar then we were educated by NIPA on climate change and what have you. I make an application on it. I was selected and this is where we had in the process training some young men to becoming bee farmers as myself. The average bee for beekeeper in Jamaica is 50 and over and I am trying to get a crop of young bee farmers like 21 to take them there because the, the, the current bee farmers are going down. So we are trying to see how best we can bring back bee farming in this community because it was a viable one. Three other communities were obvious choices for tourist attractions as they try to overcome the challenges posed by climate change. Wulde Christos is the project manager of the Belmont Fishing Beach Pier in Bluefields Bay, Westmoreland. We have a tourism entity established. We are attracting tourists to the area. The area offers tourism in terms of we have villas, guest houses, you know, so we see that um, creating this, it creates that alternative employment because a fisherman can take persons out, well first and foremost get licensed to offer tours and upon getting licensed to offer tours, they can take, you know, tourists out which will then give them a livelihood and they don't, it takes the pressure off the bay. We needed partners to make it happen and, um, and we reached out to Nepal and by reaching out to Nepal, we realized that striking a partnership, you know, they have secured funding through the Europeans, which they then um, said, listen, we can work with you in order to um, enhance what, what you're doing, your division for the area. The River Bay Fishing Village is happening in Montego Bay. The Montego Bay Marine Park Trust, in association with the Montego Bay Fishermen's Cooperative Society, has um, had put forward a proposal to do an alternative livelihoods project for those uh, who spearfish in the Montego Bay Marine Park. The reason why is that we see our coral reefs under extreme pressure from uh, warming sea temperatures, which is uh, mainly caused by climate change. Right. That coupled with, our, with issues of, sed of sedimentation and um, overflow of uh, non-point source and point source pollutants into the marine park uh, really put the ecosystem at a disadvantage. And we find that spear fishermen uh, particularly affect the fish population. And there's an interesting correlation between the fish population and the health of our coral reefs and the marine environment. In Portland Bight Clarendon, the engines are revving up for the Salt River Boat Tours. It's something that we've been discussing with the fishers for a long time and we recognize that they are some of the persons who are using natural resources. So this is a way to find something else that they can earn additional income from on a more regular basis. Obviously, it's a beautiful place that persons want to go and see and will want to come and see. So that was definitely one of the deciding factors in choosing this option. Fishers have responded positively, perhaps not as um, fully as I'd expected, but I think we look at this as a pilot project and we expect that once this project has worked out its kinks, that we will have more persons on board. We have had fishers from other beaches saying, what about our beach? Why aren't you coming to Portland Cottage? Why aren't you coming to this other beach? So we realize that there's a lot of potential for growth in looking at the number of fishers who will participate in the process. The natural surroundings are important, but we also want people to have a different experience. So whether it is that we look at um, having somebody to come to, to, to cook Jamaican food, so they're having a jerk experience, you know, so they're having a jerk pork, jerk chicken, um, whether it is that we, you know, the opportunity for them to snorkel or to swim, depending on the particular site. And as I said before, looking at the natural resources, so they will be seeing possibly crocodiles or dolphins or fish, or birds, you know, uh, as well as the mangroves and the explanation from the tour operators who would be the, the boatmen. They will tell their own stories which will make it even that much more interesting. The Jamaican tourism product welcomes new attractions. 
So the ecotourism project, the River Bay Fishing Village, and the Salt River Boat Tours are definitely on the right track. In another section of Bluefields Bay, they are countering the negative effects of climate change through organic farming. Upton Lawrence represents the Westland Organic Farmers Society. I would never know nothing about those type of practices. I only know about conventional farming. That we use a lot of fertilizer, they dig up the land, the rain come and it wash it away and do stuff. We learn from the Jamaica um, organic movement, these organic practices, how to do your own manure, how to stop soil erosion, how to what kind of tree not to cut down, what you can put in the soil to help the soil nutrients and those stuff. And from that I just love organic farming. So eventually I come back home and I start doing some practicing on my own little farm back in Montreal. And from that the group the group start to grow with a lot of person. People like it and come into the group, they get registered. And from that we start go from place to place. We start to plant, do our own individual farming back home and back on our little farm. We were at the um, Fisherman Beach, go to a workshop there and we hear about different, the EU have different different things that they funded. So what we have to do as a um, society, uh, we have to write a proposal. So when we come up with that proposal, we come up with a lot of things. Our, our crop that we, we used, used to grow, we grow like sorrel, we grow like callaloo, puff choy, we have other farmers who grow like sweet pepper, broccoli, and a, a, lot of, a host of different different crops. To consistently plant in sorrel, we have to have water that we can plant sorrel right around the time. And we also, what we do with the sorrel when we have it, we do agro-processing with the sorrel. So we make like drums and jellies, we make like plum jams, sorrel jams, now we're even making guava jelly. It really started with a, a needs assessment and priori pri prioritizing those needs. Um, the group worked in two groups, uh, the group of members who are farmers and members who are into the agro-processing. And we looked at the needs of, of those members. Uh, and the top needs were, for the farmers, was access to water, access to land, um, improved seeds, uh, tools and things like that. Uh, and on the agro-processing side, it was um, you know, good kitchen space, access to commercial equipment and um, just more training. At the western tip of the island in Negril Westmoreland, we were exposed to the unique sea moss project by the Negril Coral Reef Preservation Society as they fight back against climate change. The Negril Coral Reef Preservation Society, as you know, is into coral reef protection, preservation, and we, we ensure that the coral reef um, survives and as you know coral reef because of climate change phenomena is coming under some serious pressure. In addition to providing income and shoreline protection locally now in Little Bay some of our coral reef members they are suffering loss of income from climate change phenomena. Because of the pressure coral reef is coming under the fisher folks who depend on the coral reef and you know coral reef provide um, habitat for, for fish and other marine life. Their stock, what they catch, their, their bunty is dwindling. Similar to the farmers, the farmers in the area, who are some of our members also, are coming under serious pressure. The NCRP, NCRPS being cognizant of this, collaborating with NEPA, who is such a great partner and an enforcer and protector of the environment. We're collaborating with them to provide alternative livelihood for the farmers and the fisher folks. I don't know which tourists don't eat ice cream. And ice cream, to, to make ice cream, one of the critical ingredients is, is sea moss. It's also believed that sea moss is a serious aphrodisiac. I remember when I was in Centon way back in the days, the biggest thing was iris marsh and linseed, and I don't see that no more. It is our intent to resuscitate it. And we are also, if we grow more than the local market can consume, then we look seriously at um, exporting. A great concept. But the energetic and enthusiastic gentleman doesn't stop there. 
His Negril Coral Reef Preservation Society has also undertaken an agricultural assignment, the Royal Palm Nursery. What we're doing here is a very integrated project where, you know, there's two things that cause climate change. One, CO2 emission from motor vehicle and heavy industries. And two, um, deforestation. So the carbon in the atmosphere causes the climate to warm. So we, we figure that any alternative livelihood that we're going to approach, then it should address one, taking the CO2 from the atmosphere and sequestering it into the ground where it belongs, and two, um, taking cars off the road. Because we believe 500 palm trees would be the equivalent of taking about a dozen cars off the road annually. The amount of CO2 that it would store into the ground. And three, it would be to provide livelihood for the folks. And four, it would also mitigate people from going into the Royal Palm Reserve to remove those protected palms. The alternative livelihood component of the climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction has been extremely successful. It's one component that actually brings joy to my heart and to all of those who have been able to participate in this process. It's really good that we were able to have the opportunity to provide community members with a chance to increase their resilience to climate change. It's exposing them to livelihoods that, that can expand, that can grow, that can provide um, resources for the community, that can provide an opportunity for people to send their children to school while still taking care of the environment. Everything is rolling quite fine. Yeah. Just, and and, and, and they, they the, the good thing about it, the trainees, they are committed. Some used to do fishing, yes. Some used to do carpentry okay. and all of that. And they gravitate right over now to honey production. And in five years and beyond, we plan to have our own even buckling plant where we can source internationally we send honey. Because basically, our honey in Jamaica is the best in the world. And there's a great market overseas because right now we can't export honey because we don't have enough. We are hoping that in another few years we'll be counting as we are counting now. And then we want to farm ourselves in a cooperative. Um, it's just a drop in the bucket. Thinking about the economic crisis facing the country and the communities generally. And then to persuade farmers from, I mean coal burners, from burning coal, it's not easy, it's part of their culture. Also the fisher folks, it's part of their culture, but I know that they will realize, as they are realizing the serious impact they are facing right now, especially from climate change. We are looking in areas um, where we can sell bees and, and, and hive bodies and whatever. Because if we do our split and do our breed, we can actually sell bees itself, honey itself and honey byproduct. Where's the market for that? We could do bees for marketing, wax for production, wax for cosmetic. Wax